So obviously I've been slacking with the streaming on here for a while, right? And I know some of you guys have been pissed and again, apologies for my delays and my slackness and whatnot. But the reason why I've been slacking a bit with the uploads on here is because there's not really much going on in the whole com comedy scene. It feels like everybody's on their best behavior. Like I pointed out at the start of the podcast, I feel like people are basically, especially since Brendan's got through what he went through, I think it woke a lot of people, a lot, it woke a lot of them up in terms of how many people are watching, especially people like us. I like to laugh at them for, you know, they've got their fans who don't really care. But for us who find, you know, comedy in some of their mistakes and their mishaps, I think they realize, wow, there's a lot of them watching and there's a lot of them like legitimately watching, clipping what we say. And, you know, as funny as it is, it's, you know, not funny, but as good as it is to get views, you don't want anyone to kind of have a compilation of all your fuck ups on YouTube, getting hundreds of millions of views. It's just not needed. So I think a lot of them have kind of pulled back on doing anything too dumb or saying anything too outlandish. So there's not really much to report on, but I'll do my best to try and fill it up with some sort of fun stuff where we can all laugh about. But one thing that happened over the last few weeks that I thought was fairly funny was um, Whitney Cummings went on to Joe Rogan's podcast to talk about her new specialist out. Um, so if you want to watch that, go and watch that. But I thought this clip um, f was really funny because essentially this is the confirmation that we need that finally, 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 Joe Rogan has woken up to the possibility of why some people don't like Brendan Shorp. Now, I'm not saying he has to always kind of be the one that's, you know, flying the banner of the flipping t fat k subreddit he doesn't have to be a homeless cat he doesn't have to attack him the way those guys attack him no that's not the case but it used to really get on my nerves when i'd hear him kind of not to defend him of course he's your friend but he 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 just didn't understand why anybody would not like brendan like he's it's impossible not to like him and i really and i was like don't you know your friends like i have friends that i know who i like but I also know why other people don't like them. Do you know what I mean? But they're still my friends. doesn't mean I'm going to disown them. But I understand why somebody would speak ill of that person. Don't get me wrong. You can't do it around me because I'll beat you up. But still, I understand why you wouldn't like my friend because of his attitude, because of his how he carries himself, because of his views, whatever it may be. But I just don't like the fact that these guys think there is no reason under the sun that anybody could not like somebody it's because you know it's just because they're hating just because they're jealous of you because they want your success they want your money it's like no sometimes we could just look at you not like your character think you carry yourself a certain way and just make our mind up that way and also it's not that big of a deal but still i find this clip really interesting because it basically shows that maybe joe rogan's been watching a few of these videos online checking out what the all the all the fuss is about because it must be impossible not to want to check a couple of videos if you're curious to find out what's happening why is everybody attacking Brendan? Why don't they like him? And clearly he's kind of found it out because I think this clip from um, his podcast, feeding which Whitney Cummings basically confirms that he understands now why people don't like Brendan Shaw. In this documentary, the most- Or he's aware at least that he's not liked. Hated man on the internet? No. Did who, who is the most hated man on the internet? His name is Hunter Moore. I don't Brandon know- Brendan Shaw just went like this. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> 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 I remember this. <laughs> I don't even want to get caught in these crosshairs. Oh yeah, and it's interesting too because um, for his entire, for her entire um, what's your thing called podcast promo tour thing, I don't think I've seen Whitney Cummings on the Fire and a Kid. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I don't think I've seen her on the Fire and a Kid yet, which is funny because obviously they always should be cool, close friends and stuff. But ever since what went down with Chris Lear went down and what happened to Brian, what happened, you know, whatever went down to Brian happened as well. She's clearly kind of distanced herself from that entire group of people, which if I'm to be honest, if I was them, I'd be a bit pissed off about even given what they've done or what they've been accused of. I'd be highly annoyed if she suddenly turned into a, um, what would you say? If she suddenly started to disavow them as friends and as people, because if it was me and I was them, I'd be like, you were around, you knew what I was getting up to, you knew what time I was on. And now all of a sudden, because you're on this other walk of life or you're going this other direction, you want to distance yourself from people like myself because you, you think we're bad for business. But I'd be highly annoyed if I was them, to be honest. But it's very interesting that she hasn't made a single appearance on the Fire and the Kid this entire time she's promoting a comedy special. And if I'm not mistaken, she's also, I felt like, giving everybody a heads up that she doesn't want to talk about Brendan Shaw or Brian Callen or Chris D'Elia, 
which I think is a bit gross personally for me. Because I think these guys, they have they have all the smoke. They have all the smoke. They have all the they have all the chat for people, other people when they get cancelled, and they want to talk about it ad nauseum. The moment it happens to their little group, they suddenly start getting scared and don't want to lose their jobs. And the funny thing about it is that their group usually has the most sickos. So really and truly, what you should do is just make not talk about anybody. Just keep your mouth shut. You know, uh, what's that saying? Um, don't throw stones in the glass house and just, you know, mind your business. But they're so nosy and so gossipy, most of these comedians, that they can't help but speak about other people. So when a topic comes about where some other Hollywood star gets cancelled, they want to talk about it and dissect the reasons why. Oh, shit, they're in a cult. Oh, no, they abuse young girls. They want to talk about it a lot, right? But the moment it happens to somebody in their own group, their own group, they're all suddenly quiet. They're too scared to comment on it. They don't want the person to come on their show. I thought you were anti-cancer culture. I thought you guys are anti-censorship. Right, I thought that was the thing. If that's if that's the case, you're anti-counterculture, anti-censorship, and you can do what you want. Why not you get your friends on your show so they can defend themselves? Joe Rogan's a good example of that too. Don't get me wrong; it's not his position to do it, but you got the biggest podcast in the world, mate. Do you know what I mean? You're anti-censorship and stuff. If your friends are in a pickle and you actually think they didn't do what they were accused of, why don't you lend them your platform so that they can broadcast their defense to to millions and potentially billions of people? But they don't because they're all full of shit, which is not a bad thing. Again, like I keep saying, being full of shit is not a bad thing. I'm full of shit. You're full of shit. But we know we're full of shit. For some reason, these guys don't think they're full of shit. That's the thing that's really funny. Even though they're comedians, just you, by your very nature, you should be full of shit. Do you know what I mean? Because you're a stand-up comedian. That's the whole reason why you're funny, because you're full of shit and you make that funny. But for whatever reason, they don't, they don't grasp that and they turn into these kind of weird contradictions of themselves when they get put in the same situation it's really really strange i don't really know why it is exactly but i have noticed it a bit and i'm honestly if it was me and i was crystalia and i was brian callan and i was brendan shaw i'd be like how dare you how dare you think you're above me now how dare you think um how dare you basically turn your back on me and all that whatever it may be because you were there you were fucking there do you know what I mean you know exactly what time I was on you know exactly what type of person I am and now all of a sudden you're trying to you know uh pretend to be the better person or whatnot it's just nah I wouldn't have it man personally if I was me again that's not me excusing what they did I still think they're all guilty personally for me I don't think there's any smoke about fire don't get me wrong but I'm just saying if I was looking at it through the eyes of those guys I would be annoyed don't get me wrong, I'd be really annoyed. But again, that's me. Um, what, what's, what are you guys saying in the chat here? I've seen it blowing up. Um, 100% saying, if you're going to be a comedian, how can you not make fun of yourself? Exactly, says the robot. Leslie says, exactly. Berlin says, much love, mate. Thank you. Thank you, Blohini. Oh, did I say Blohini or Blohini? Um, Josie says, they're the worst than women when it comes to gossip. I don't agree with that. Josie Masters. Proven187 says, yeah, they're all a bunch of narcissists. They're also fragile. Yeah, narcissism is probably the explanation for all things, isn't it, really? Um, the robot said, do you guys see the clip of Whitney talking about Cannon whipping his dick out in front of the car when they first met? Exactly, the robot. Look, we have to all be honest here. There are some occasions, there are some occasions in life where your friends... Um, <laughs> Ludova. Why does that joke always make me laugh? Why does those? Why do those shitty dad jokes like that always make me laugh? Almost didn't see you in the camo, brother. Why does those things always? Why do I laugh at shitty dad jokes, but then I can't laugh at these professional stand-up comedians and their comedy specials that they put time into and they craft? Why do those crappy jokes make me laugh more than professional stand-up comedians? Please tell me why. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um the robot the robot mentioned a good point whitney cummins said this story ages ago on the fire and the kid um when they were all friends when it used to be good on fox oh it was so good back on the edge of fox man <laughs> anyway when fire and the kid was good on fox whitney cummins shared a story that, you know in front of brian callen when they first met brian was obviously trying to put the moves on her because obviously he wants to fuck anything that's moving he's one of those type of dudes and one of his moves for whatever reason was when they're in a car together and was he driving i think he must have been no he might not brian's definitely that kind of guy that likes getting driven around by women you know those type of dudes i like to get driven around like he's definitely one of those type of guys so maybe he was in the passenger seat and for whatever reason i guess he felt horny or he felt a connection he whipped out his dick in the car now i guess he felt she was one of those girls that's going to get down and suck it, wank it, whatever it may be. She didn't. They laughed about it and then it kind of, you know, they turned into friends. But I thought that little joke story they shared where they all laughed, once the allegations came out about Brian 
it was also very Brian Brian that name it, it kind of explained a lot you know what I mean and it kind of married up to his personality that the person that would whip out their dick in front of a person they don't know in a situation that probably wasn't very conducive to that kind of level of flirting because you know it can happen you can be somewhere and you can have a connection with somebody across a dance floor and think you know what then whip out my dick <laughs> I think they're ready right there can be occasions where that can happen but you, you wouldn't imagine just talking to somebody normally talking about the industry talking about you know wanting to go grab some lunch maybe oh yeah don't worry i'll give you a lift to the, to the to the shop around the corner to get some lunch you jump in the car you're talking about lunch you might be talking about something you saw on tv and then bang a dip comes out that's a bit weird isn't it but it also explained i think the allegations against um brian at the time it definitely explained it and it made me believe that those allegations were definitely true um but also it explains that she was aware that brian was on demon time from ages ago so if you witness that, I'm pretty sure her close relationship with Chris D'Elia, there's no way that she didn't witness or wasn't present or around the times when he came into the comedy store with a haram of flipping 16 year olds. I don't think that, that was ever not the case. You can't, you can't not, not see that. Like it's just not, it's just not possible. So this whole, I'm not going to talk about them because I don't want to be associated with it because I'm over it because I don't think it's nice because it's not something I condone. It's just, come on, do me a favor. Do me a fucking favor. You were there. You knew. We all know you knew. <laughs> but yeah, what are we going to do, man?